Hi guys, Dorota Palicka International, new artist and educator here and today we are going to do this pretty one stroke set. So I already started and you can see it, we have done this set before. Uh, so the first step I need to do it is to push back the cuticles. So just nice and firm push. And then we are going to use the e-file to do the cuticle work on the one side first. So one side. And then go with the other side. Also, that's the e-file I'm using, so it's a Melody Susie uh, file, nice and quiet one. We are going to take a safety bit now and remove the existing uh, design on it. We have encapsulated the design um, quite deeply inside, so I wouldn't be able to remove it completely. I just really want to uh, remove the design which is on the top and we are going to keep this base color. So it will look quite um, messy-ish and uh, I will show you how to cover the uh, entire nail with a different type of the design. So it is quite rare for me to use um, gel in a color and we did it in here like I have mixed it some uh, light violet with a milky pink gel. There is a tutorial of those nails as well. Um, so I'm just basically removing the top design which is the flowers and the transfer foil and then I will be blending any lifting um, and doing a quick rebalance on those nails. Uh, if we would want to go like for a French look, uh, obviously you will need to remove the color right down to the clear gel. Uh, because we are doing the design, I can keep the existing color at the end of the nail. Okay, that's me happy with this uh, removal. So clean the dust and then swap to the hand file. We need to shorten them. Sorry, I need you nice and straight. <laughs> we need to shorten them. So I'm always filing one side, other side, and then shorten the free edge. Catherine Mills grows down eventually. Uh, so I like to always give them a little lift from underneath uh, when doing the filing, and we need to shorten them of a growth. Okay, then thin out the free edge. Don't worry if you overfile the color. Like as I say, we are going to use uh, some other um, colors to cover it up. The main thing for me at this stage is to remove any loose product which might be on the nail. You don't want to encapsulate uh, loose products uh, on the nails because uh, that could cause the disaster. So like, make sure there is no loose product. Okay, I'm happy with this one file the other one. Also look how I'm holding the new folds. Uh, I'm pulling them down to make sure I do not hurt my client. Okay, so uh, keep pulling those new folds down. And then each time when we're shortening the nails, we also want to um, file the free edge as well, just so it's nice and thin. Because of the structure of the nails, like they always tend to go much thicker as we shorten them. And Catherine nails are prone to lifting. Uh, they're quite flat and uh, oily. They do not scratch well. So I always have to make sure that uh, the preparation of the nail is really, uh, really good so they don't lift. Okay, I'm happy with that. So remove the dust and then trim any necessary cuticle which, which we've got in there. So I'm removing anything which might be still on the nail plate and just the excess of it uh, in there and then do it on this one. Never remove too much, especially when you have to do the filing. 
Okay, that's me quite happy with it. So we're using a uh, file now to give an extra scratches to the natural nail plate. Okay, you can see it is really nice and white. That means it's ready. I also suspend there might be some lifting in here. I don't want to risk it. Uh, so I'm just filing a little bit more. It's not going to take me long time. And uh, I don't want to really leave it any loose product on the nail. Yeah, it kind of feels like it comes off too easy. That's it, and then do it in here. So just give it a couple more scratches. And then that's them ready. Okay, remove the dust, blue scrap to dehydrate the nail plate. And also I have left the other nails empty just to show you how quick um, the designs can be in salon when it comes to the one stroke. Extra nail prep to dehydrate further. I was maybe too fussy about this, but also I wanted to show you two different ways. Like uh, that's obviously if I had some lifting, I had to remove it more. If I didn't have the lifting, I have to remove it less. Uh, how this will look as the end results, okay? So an universal air bond. An universal air bond is a product I'm using to give me a better attention uh, of the gel to the natural nails. And um, it works like a base gel. We are going to use the... Uh, fiber gel and milky peel uh, pink shade and they are hema free like my clients love it like we never had any uh, issues like and even on a clients like uh, Catherine which are very prone to lifting uh, we can get a quite uh, good and impressive results now my first layer is a nice and thin layer that's a kind of working through layer the layer which can attach really well to the natural nail look how strongly i'm pressing it into the nail plate i wanted it to really get in there okay at the same time i have cut the free edge and also you can go very close to the cuticle so i'm gonna cure this 60 seconds and then normally i would do the other hand but now we just have to cook them okay so that's them done i'm picking up another scoop of the product and again, I'm applying a really nice and thin layer. Those two thin layers is enough product for me around the cuticle area and on the sides. Yes, it is enough. <laughs> and then a second layer, nice and thin. Okay, then I'm picking up a quite large scoop and actually I'm going to swap it. So don't pick up the large scoop, kind of think of head. Uh, I'm picking up a small scoop to fill out this nail first so I can do them both at the same time, even if the temperatures is quite warm. We need to get quite close to the cuticle, but not touching, not as close as those first layer. And then I'm placing um, those missing product on the places where we had the growth and where we have removed the old one. And then just press very hard at the free edge because you don't want to bring any extra products in there. Now the bigger scoop, so the bigger scoop goes in here, release it from your brush, like kind of like in and out motion. So you've got a wee nice ball there and then just work it through it so on the places where I'm missing a lot of product hardly any press in there and on the places where I've got lots of product like a thick uh, thick press and this way we have filled those nails I'm just gonna check if the product didn't run no it didn't run so it's still good I could do a little string in there just to fill that up and then we can cure them 60 seconds cool so that's them cured nice and properly and we can remove the inhibition layer so uv cleanser to remove those inhibition layer and then we can shape them so the same kind of thing like we did it with the um, first filing when we was removing the old product i'm filing the sides so they kind of nice and equal and then i can sort out the the free edge i also want to remove any bulk of the product which i might there might have there and then i need to really extremely well blend the cuticle area and what happens quite often with Catherine nails they will lift as we file <laughs> this is terrible like i mean this is always so difficult uh, client to, to manage in that matter. 
but uh, if they do lift I mean I don't know if they will this time or not but uh, they are more likely to do so if they do I'm doing like a mini rebalance at the same appointment and uh, getting rid of that lifting and filling up with the fresh gel and then that way it's it, it works magic because her nails can last up to six up to six weeks if we if we do it that way okay keep smoothing it out so it's nice nice and smooth and then this one exactly the same so file one side other side free edge it out because you don't want excess of the product especially that's with this design we will be applying a top coat couple of times uh, so that's my give you an extra thickness that's why i'm kind of doing those nails pretty flat i would say much thinner than uh, normally because we will add it extra layers with the um, with the actual top coat and the design okay that's the filing almost done Like make sure there is no bits and pieces left over. Check the length, check the shape. I'm pretty happy with it. So a buffer, white buffer. Again, protect the client nail folds. And then I'm going to file it quite fast and decent, I would say. Um, just to smooth everything out. Same on this one to smooth things out. I can see it. I've got a tiny bit of product in that corner here. You cannot leave those kind of stuff. Um, and if it's difficult to reach it with the normal new file, uh, I quite often take a cuticle bit, like a nice and thin one, and then I'm just filing this area to get rid of, uh, of any excess product. Actually, this one will do the nice wee ball. Low speed. And then just let file it here. I do really recommend it like uh, doing it with the, uh, like some sort of old beat rather than trying to reach it with your file. It will be much more difficult and much more time consuming. Once we have done that, I'm taking the gray buffer and I'm kind of brushing away any dust particles. I'm blending the product with the cuticle uh, area like you want it to be invisible. You don't want them to see where the product is starting. I'm also filing it down from underneath to smooth it out. You can see it here, I've got some place where I have no product, no color, uh, it's fine um, as long as, as the overall shape of the nail is good. So it is quite difficult to see it because when you look at the nail at this stage it looks very uneven and the reason for it is this color difference like um, because of the encapsulation. So I'm running through with my fingers because sometimes the finger can feel it more than the human eye can see it. Probably in the camera I will see it more because camera always enlarge the things as well I also love this motion it smooths out the nails really really nice and the reason for it why we wanted it so smooth is we are going to use the chrome and when we working with the chromes chromes shows up any nail perfection nail imperfections like 10 times more than they actually are also, I'm trying to push this cuticle a little bit more because it's a bit, the nail fold is a bit uneven. And that's me happy with it. So clean the dust particles. And now this design is going to be super quick and easy. So I've got an old pot, like a really old pot of the gel. And it was dark blue, then it was light blue. And then I added a drop of yellow in it to create kind of turquoise. Uh, I like to keep those old pots of the gels. Um, for mixing my own colors and then keep it in this pot instead of binning I'm always keeping it it and I'm using the watercolor brush and what I'm doing now is I'm just filling up the area around the cuticle 
so nice and thin layer and then just slap it on very quick way of of creating a pretty design and then just slap it on next color we are gonna use will be a turquoise uh, not turquoise but the pink one no the violet one <laughs> purple one so i've got my sponges here let me grab this one back of the form so it's nice and sticky layer and this one i'm gonna cut it into half so cut it into half i usually prefer to work with the place which has the cut okay so that's my place which had the cut i'm just removing any fluffy bits and pieces do not attach it too strongly to the form because if you do you will rip off the um, sponge further and then that can give you quite a lot of um like a fluffy bits and pieces which you don't want so very gentle presses and now what i'm doing is i'm just going like this very random uh, only to blend this color in a little bit and that's it okay that's that's what look quite nice the way it is uh, but i wanted it purple so i'm just slapping on purple and then using the other sponge and just touch it up to kind of blend it i'm not blending it uh, too strongly and too nicely it's a really random blend once we're happy with it we can give it 60 seconds cure Okay, that's it cooked so we can apply the top coat and you can see it like yes there are some maybe empty spaces but because we are applying a chrome uh, this is going to be invisible so just apply the chrome make sure it doesn't have a dust particles and things like that if it does you will need uh, like it will show up really badly in a chrome And then the top coat, I cure it always uh, 60 seconds and a lamp. I've got one dust particle, I will cover it with the um, flower inside. So 60 seconds cure. And in the meantime, I'm going to prepare the next things we are going to use for this design. So this is going to be those angel chrome. And I, I've got it on my nails, I love it so much. So on my nails, guys, I've got it. I'm not sure if this video is already out or not. Uh, I've got it just on top of the Perfect Rose Gel. Um, and that's it. Like, I, I love the look of it. Like, it looks absolutely amazing and uh, fantastic. And what is best about it is like on different color, it looks completely different. So we will be rubbing this chrome in. And also we need some acrylic paint. So uh, I have used some nail form and then I've got this piece in here in a salon because I have no time like, you know, in between the clients and I want to minimalize the things. I always saving, if I'm sculpting the set of the nails, I'm always saving those pieces because they are fantastic for um, mixing the paints and then you just bin it, you would bin them anyway. Uh, I'm using a drop of the pink one, like it's hardly visible actually in my design, but I want to use a drop of this pink paint. Um, now my nails are ready. So when I'm doing a preparation, I'm also, because my nails are so long, I'm placing the product in the lid. So from the lid, I can wrap this into the client's uh, nails. Okay, so wrap this in. Looks fantastic. Almost like a mare mindset, isn't it? Very pretty. And not over the top. I mean, it will look fantastic even on its own. Uh, guys, we could do like a, maybe a wee shell design. I had actually dilemma. Now, for chromes, scratch the free edge because the top coat is not going to stick into the shiny surface. Uh, clean any excess of the chrome and then we are going to re-top coat it. I wouldn't have to, but uh, I want to. So first of all, my chrome will last me better. And then secondly, if I do the mistake, I can easily wipe it off. And I actually did mistake on the other nail. I think, was it fam? Mm -hmm. Fam. And I had to wipe it off the flower. Yeah. So it does happen like, you know, uh, that's you might be not happy with the painting you have done. And when you follow those steps, you can easily uh retouch it and make it it nicer okay fantastic cook it in again i can close my chromes so just 
put it back into the pot and then the purple paint so i'm still using the previous paints i had um this one is really right at the end it doesn't squeeze through the top so what i'm doing is i'm usually opening it up actually it even doesn't want to squeeze out anymore so i will just use a dotting tool and grab a, actually this is the last time i can use this paint um if the paint dry out quite a lot like this is really right at the end you can add a little bit of water you can see the consistency of the paint isn't fantastic i can bin it uh, because i'm not going to use it anymore and clean my dotting tool and add a drop of the water so if we add a drop of the water into it we can mix it nice and got a right consistency when my hand is curing there we are. So that's the acrylic paint ready for a painting. Okay, my hand is cooked, so put your paints away because we need to give it a couple scratches to it. You don't want to paint on a shiny surface. So what I'm doing is I'm giving a couple scratches to the chrome, obviously to the top coat. Don't overdo it and I'm using the gentle buffer because you really don't want to remove your chrome. <laughs> that would be disaster. Okay, clean the dust. <clears throat> and then let's painting. So I have left four nails just so you can see it. Uh, that's actually even in a salon. The things can be quite quick. I've got some water. And I've got my brush in there. So just let me prep the brush. I am always like to introduce extra water. Because I have used it for the painting. And then we are going to also add some white paint. So a drop of the white paint. Pick up white on the one corner of the brush and then the purple one on the other corner of the brush. A drop more of a pink, just so we've got a nice consist, like nice color difference in it. I like it, like painting with few different colors. more water and that's too much now but will be perfect in a second i do really take time like finding the right consistency if it's not your painting is not gonna be nice perfect that's me happy and we are going to paint a couple of the flowers very easy ones so i'm just touching with the brush and because of the mm, size of the brush because of the angle of the brush, um, it can create like an amazing petals just with the touches of the brush. So I'm using the Demaster brush and it's so tiny, it's just fantastic for those kind of painting. <clears throat> okay, so just the touches. And I quite often like to paint those um, bottom petals so i would paint like the same thing on a couple nails and then go back and finish the next uh, things especially um with the acrylic paints you want them to kind of sometimes dry a little bit so you can go over or you can um go very close to the previous painting you have created Don't touch the paint which is wet so this was very tempting but i cannot touch it because i would break the design and um, almost like remove the old paint with the brush so i never do that okay now i'm happy with this one or maybe not uh, so a drop of the water if i'm going over it a second time i tend to go quite nice and uh, watery Clean my brush because now I've got excess of the paint and I'm always squeezing the brush so it's really nice and flat. Uh, don't make your brush look like hungry. <laughs> Mix my paint again at a drop of those pink. So in some petals I'm going to have those pink. I did remove the excess of the water on the side. So when you've got too much it's not good but also you cannot have too little this just has to be perfect there we are okay and then i'm going to paint half open petals half open flowers i wanted to say gosh i'm losing my voice 
Okay, so another ones. Leave them to dry. Then straight away touch up this petal because I didn't like it. it. Pick up a tiny bit of the fresh paint again. And then add some more tiny wee petals on the top. Really just a touches of the brush. It feels like the other hand was done like faster. <laughs> I think I'm talking too much. It takes ages now. And the light reflection, I cannot squeeze my head the way I should, so I cannot see it actually what I'm mixing. It's a kind of guess. There we are. So next one in here. Close them. Just with the touches of the brush. Okay, I'm happy with this one. Happy, happy, happy. Just leave them alone. So I don't want to do anything else. You know, sometimes less is more. Lots of bra uh, water, ah, lots of water on the brush. And then we are going to do a microscopic dots. Again, something which shouldn't be done with the brush. I, I say it at many, many times, but I do it many times as well. And this is terrible because I shouldn't. Uh, but when you're doing a dots with your brush, like make sure I'm almost I'm not going like straight I'm going a little bit side and uh, I'm trying to don't uh, break a tip like retraining your brush after doing such as dots uh, is gonna take some time because uh, you will have to kind of roll it on the um, piece of paper with the paint to straighten it up I actually love this set such a pretty one and what I love the most about one stroke is once you put the top coat over it it's okay we the things like kind of it's almost like a water for the <laughs> flowers <laughs> they becoming alive so cover everything with the top coat cap those free edge again so this will give us also an extra protection to our chrome Really nice and pretty design. Not too much top coat. So my brush, like when it goes like this, is capping the free edge. I love this color combination. So nice. And this way, basically, we have finished those quick rebalance on those nails. Probably next time we will just bin them and start uh, fresh depending how they will behave but that's what we have created today obviously things don't look pretty until we clean the new folds wash the hands because there is lots of dust uh, excess and the cuticles um, so let me cook them and then I can show you the final results
Okay, so that's my nails cooked and I also show you a few things like um, properly because like I quite often I cut the video in that time and then I cook the nails. So here you can see it. I've got a tiny bit of the lick of the top coat. I take a file and I'm touching it up with the file. Uh, if I see some sort of imperfections, I still got some um, possibility like to kind of perfect them before I'm start, like before I take a thumbnail pictures and sometimes I actually can take a quite a long time on it. You know, on those little uh, bits and pieces, um, if I notice something something else before taking a picture, uh, I will always uh, sort it out. Then clean the entire new folds, like we'll probably go and wash, uh, wash the hands as well, as I say. Uh, things will look much prettier uh, then. And never touch the top coat too soon. Let always the top coat to cool down a little bit uh, before you do any any work, because it wouldn't look nice. It will go quite dull. And same, do not apply the cuticle oil uh, over your top coat. Uh, but that's the finished results. I want to show you also uh, this side because I think they look absolutely fantastic and amazing. Look at those uh, different angles of the light flashing through it. And now we are going to go and do a beautiful thumbnail picture. Huge glittery hacks and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye!